we're going to be doing a presentation on doing business in Costa Rica. We're going to start with a little bit of background and then we're going to go into a little bit of strategy. For the purposes of this, the product isn't all that important, but uh, we're going to focus on what it would be like to, to sell a consumer type good in Costa Rica for simplicity. So when I talk about this, I mean a TV, Levi's, iPhone, something targeted at the uh, middle class, which actually is fairly significant in Costa Rica. So just a little bit of background, Costa Rica has been independent since 1821. They've actually been permanently neutral as well since 1993. This is a significant thing to note because it has a lot to do with political risk, that they're not going to get involved with a lot of the vulnerability happening in other countries, both in Central America and around the world. The population's up actually about 77% Catholic, and Spanish is the official language. Coffee's also been the official principal crop since 1808 when it was brought over from Europe. Other principal industries um, are technology, tourism, and agriculture. There's a large service industry in Costa Rica. There's also a large industry of creating computer chips and very specialized technology components that are then usually exported back to the United States. Costa Rica does have fairly strong economic institutions. They have a mixed economy, so they have a lot of private investment, but they also have a centrally planned economy, which involves a lot of government regulation and control. They've been fairly successful in being attractive to FDI, though. Um, they actually have the highest amount of FDI in all of Latin America. This also makes them, though, very dependent on the United States because that's where a lot of their not only their FDI comes from, but tourism being such a large part of Costa Rican economy, it's also very dependent on the United States economy. Legal institutions are not quite as advanced in Costa Rica as the economic institutions might be. Uh, they're actually ranked lower than 100 in all these bull areas, so resolving insolvency, enforcing contracts, um, paying taxes, protecting investors, starting a business. These are all things that um, if you actually are going to have some sort of actual FDI or uh, actual operations in Costa Rica, it's going to affect your day-to-day -day doing businesses and it's going to make it more difficult than it would in you know, more than 100 countries around the world, which is something to certainly be um, thought about before going into a country. Well, the political institutions, though, actually um, have a lot less risk than most countries around the world. Um, they are politically neutral. Um, strategically, especially as far as e-commerce um, or commerce around the world goes, they actually have recently aligned with China, which enables them to have access to over a billion people to um, then market to and, and export to as well, which is uh, a great economy that they've recently opened themselves up to. Uh, they actually do not have armed forces at all uh, as well, which is, you know, just a note of their political neutrality and their severe, real intent to not have any conflict with any of their neighbors or any countries around the world. There are several environmental concerns to consider when going into Costa Rica. Uh, there is a high risk of natural, natural disaster. They have um, coasts on both sides of the country and they're very susceptible to hurricane season. Um, also, more than 25% of the land is protected. So being a small country with one-fourth of the land being actually protected rainforest, uh, finding land and real estate is something to be of note. They're also, as of 2007, have a goal of being the first carbon neutral country. So this is... Um, going to be a significant aspect of any co company trying to be involved with Costa Rica because there's going to be green concerns and the expectation that the company is going to do the right thing by the environment. And sometimes this is, can add extra costs versus other countries that have less strict regulations regarding the environment. So the Hofstede Index compared to the United States is a really great gauge of kind of the cultural differences between Costa Rica and the United States. We all know that individualism is very high in the United States. Um, it's actually very low in Costa Rica, which, while common for Latin American countries, it's actually extremely low 
in Costa Rica. This means that if you're going to actually set up shop in Costa Rica, you're going to have to be very conscious of the fact that you are most likely going to have to change your reward structure, uh, the way people are recognized, a lot of things about corporate cultures that uh, drive things in the United States are going to have to be very different in Costa Rica. Also, masculinity index is also significantly lower in Costa Rica. This is um, probably in large part due to the fact that Costa Rica does have a very laid-back culture. They like to be very much in touch with nature, the environment, as well as um, each other and their family. So the gender very specific roles are going to be different, and work-life balance is going to be something that's much more valued in Costa Rica perhaps than the United States. So if you're going to employ people there or even, you know, market to uh, the consumer there, you're going to have to keep in mind that Costa Ricans are going to value their fam time with their family, um, being in touch with the environment much more than they might necessarily value um, their job or workplace. Also, uncertainty avoidance is a little bit higher. They are you know, a fairly recently stable com country, and they have done an excellent job of advancing the, both education and the economy, but they are going to want to avoid uncertainty in the near future um, more than the United States. This probably is not as significant as, say, the individualism difference. However, it is something that um, before doing business there, you're going to want to make sure any client or other organization that you're doing business with is very certain in the next steps and going forward. Um, any hard selling is going to be very discouraged in Costa Rica and probably going to turn people off a lot. Uh, as a, So that was a little bit about uh, Costa Rica as an individual country. Um, they also t should be noted that they do fall under the Latin American globe study cluster. So this is, means that um, they do vary um, from the United States, even though that they aren't that far away. They are going to value um, community more, as we noted, in individualism, and um, are going to have some similarities if you already do have existing infrastructure in Mexico or the rest of Latin America. You'll probably want to bring in uh, advisors from those operations because they will have a better more similar cultural outlook than, say, somebody from the United States. Um, other cultural aspects kind of unique to Costa Rica, um, they have one of the highest life expectancies of any country in the region. Uh, so that not only is kind of a reflection of their importance that they place on health and the environment, um, but also it's going to be taxing on their social social structures. So that's something to keep in mind and looking at the tax structure as well. Also, they do have a little bit of a t different outlook on time than the United States. In social environments, it's not uncommon for people to be 15, 20 minutes late. Um, however, very similar to the United States, it is considered uh, rude to not be on time to any sort of business environment or meeting. Peace is also a very important part of the culture of this country. Uh, so in negotiations, it's going to be important to remember that uh, this is a country that has gone as far as being politically neutral in, in all aspects around the world. So they're going to be very extreme in their wanting to avoid conflict and negotiations. So it's probably best to be very indirect in communicating with Costa Ricans and make sure that you're keeping the peace and um, making sure everyone's on the same page moving forward. Also the environment, they're, um, over one fourth of the country is rainforest and they're looking to be carbon neutral. So this is gonna be a very important piece of any business done in Costa Rica or anything done in Costa Rica. They want to, they're very proud of the environment and their beautiful country and it's important that we respect that for being there. My advice um, and recommendation for a company looking to market a consumer good in Costa Rica would be to export. Um, there's several reasons for this. Uh, the first being that there's going to be a low exchange rate risk just due to the fact that Costa Rica is so close to the U.S. and following their economy. So if um, you're dealing in dollars and 
the dollar the value of the dollar falls, it's likely that um, the the value of the cologne is also going to fall just due to the fact that the Costa Rican economy very much follows the United States. So it's okay to it is probably less risky to not have the operations to hedge your exchange rate risks in Costa Rica. Costa Rica than it might be in other countries. Also, there's a very large middle class. Um, even the average wage is about upper middle class, so there's going to be a very large group of people to market to. However, um, the skilled labor market is almost is severely saturated just due to the fact that um, there are many technical jobs and service um, jobs in Costa Rica already. So attracting that great talent is going to be a little more difficult since the market has already been pretty severely saturated. Uh, in addition, tourism is a huge part of Costa Rica, and what that means for exporting is that um, a lot of these people that are working in these service industries are dealing with tourists on a daily basis. And that means if Americans are traveling down to Costa Rica on a regular basis, it's going to create a demand for American goods um, ahead of time that while usually export um, one of the difficulties that people face with exporting is that is creating that demand um, with the large amount of tourism, an iPhone example, or a piece of clothing. Uh, Costa Ricans are going to see that, and eventually there's going to be a demand for those American products. Uh, as far as the organizational structure of the MNC is concerned, it, it's going to be more of a global MNC structure. You're going to want a centralized headquarters. There's no need to create giant operations in a country if you're just exporting there. So do create a small local presence, though you're going to want that knowledge for marketing. And uh, in addition, you're going to want to train people at the headquarters on Costa Rican culture so that they are able to market and ensure that the goods that we are exporting there are going to be of significance to the Costa Ricans and going to sell well. Um, at this point, it, there's no other advice other to been to move late. Um, the early mover advantage in this country has really been taken for the most part. Um, they have already been saturated with a very skilled workforce and um, I think at this point it's best to just learn from what other companies who've expanded to, to Costa Rica have done um, and learn from their mistakes and, and let that tourism and the starting of the importing of the American culture from companies like IBM who are having computer chips built here and things of that nature build demand for the product um, so that we as a company do not have to actually create that demand moving forward. So I think that th this is all a great strategy moving forward into Costa Rica. I think that exporting these goods and, and taking advantage of the existing knowledge and base and very great consumer base of the upper middle class is going to drive great success in the strategy moving forward.